His promises are yes and amen. His promises are yes and amen. His promises are yes and amen. It is, that is the way it is. If it's in the word, it's the truth, it's a promise, and, and, and it's for you, and it's for me, and it's for everyone. There is not, not one person that God does not love. He loves us all. The other song was that he doesn't give his heart in pieces. He doesn't give his heart to us in pieces. Oh, many times in my life there was just people that broke my heart because their heart was in pieces. Our heart, our heart is broken. It's broken, and, and God, he doesn't come to us with, with pieces. He comes to us in love. Let us pray. Amen. Father God, I just come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, and I just thank you for this moment right here, Lord. I thank you for your faithfulness, Father. I thank you for your promises, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you are so alive and so real, Father. And I pray, Father God, that your word will go forth, Father God, in this, in this church, Father God. Father God, I pray that your words would open blind eyes, Father God, deaf man's ears, Father God, that it will take root into the heart, Father God, deep into the hearts. Let's have heart surgery, Lord. Heart surgery, Father God. Give us joy where there is no joy, Father God. Give them hope where there is no hope, Father God. Give them that, Father God, that all surrounding peace, that love, that joy, Father God, that you so have, that you so want and desire to give to us, Lord. Holy Spirit, arise, Holy Spirit, and have your way. Have your way, Holy Spirit. And we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hey Amen. I want to I want to thank um, City on the Hill um, for um, and Pastor and Pastora for being so obedient and, and hearing God, hearing from the Lord. You just you know it takes time. It it takes obedience. It takes a lot to hear from God. You know when you really hear from Him, and then to to allow my anointing to to uh, be able to be here because I never saw myself here where I come from I, I did not see myself here the enemy had me living a lie and I'm going to give you my testimony just part of it so much Whew. we'd be here for days we just camp out and talk but I've been living a lie most of my life most of my life, um, I'm just, you know, going, living the world, living the world, trying to, because I didn't have God in my life, because I didn't know God, I didn't know his word, I, I, I was, that's, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know about this God, I didn't know about Jesus, I, I didn't know, and I was just living this, living in the world, you know, trying to do with everybody, you know, trying to live those expectations of a, of a daughter, uh, of a, of a, of a friend, of, 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 of a, a mother, uh, of someone trying to have a job, try, trying to be what everybody else wants you to be, trying to be what my mom wanted me to be, trying to be what my job expected me to be, trying to be what my children expected me to be, trying to be what I thought I was supposed to be, trying to be what people, your neighbors wanted you to be, and it was just pulling me down. That when I walked into my, wherever I was staying, you know, I just like, wow, you know, and, and I know that's when, when I started looking for love and started looking for something to fill me, something to make me feel like I was somebody or something. And when that didn't happen, when those broken hearts came to me, then I started to turn to drugs and alcohol. And, it, and it, you know, I never saw myself where I landed up. I, I, I just did it because it made me feel good. It took away those thoughts away from me. I didn't have to think about the mistakes that I made or, or, the, or, or that I wasn't living up to what I, what I was being spoken. The lie. The lie that, that we hear. That we know that, you know, nobody could have told me that it was a lie because I thought it was me and what I saw and what I did was what, what I, was me and, and you can't tell me no difference. You couldn't tell me anything. I stood on, my, on it. I stood on it because I didn't know that we had an enemy and I didn't know that he spoke to us and I didn't know he'd come to us when we were little. I didn't know that. 
I thought my mom and my dad were supposed to protect me. But they had broken hearts. They had broken pieces. It was in 2006, and um, it was on my birthday. I was 42. And, I, uh, you know, this is in the middle of everything happening in my life. I had lost my job. I lost uh, two husbands. I had um, two children and um, lost uh, my father. Just, just all kinds of things happening in my life, um, in my addiction. And, and it was 2006 on my birthday. And I, I was by myself, and I had everything that, that I needed that, that uh, would make a, a drug addict happy. You know, I had my cigarettes, I had my, my stuff, I had my drink, I, I was by myself. And, and, um, and I remember sitting there and, and something made me fall to my knees. And now we hear about God. I had been to church a couple of times, but I, I couldn't wait to get out of there. You know, I, I was ready, you know, ready to go. And I said, okay, that's good, you know. I heard about him. And so I remember falling to my knees and just crying out to this God to help me. Because at that moment, I knew that I needed some help. And I cried far. And I say that because in my testimony, because see, I didn't know God was there. I thought God was in heaven, and heaven seemed like really, really far away. And I cried out to this God, you know, in heaven to help me. I cried out to him, and I asked him to help me. And I, I was really coming from deep inside. I was coming from deep inside. I was tired of being sick and tired. I was tired of this life. I didn't, I didn't you know, I just didn't want to live it no more. And I cried out to this God far. And then I, then I got up and went about my, my day, went about my business. And if, that was in January 25th, 2006. And then... Um, in February, I got a letter, and it was from a person that had, would have speak in my life, spoke to me about the word, and actually the person took me to church. But the one thing that he had told me that stuck in the back of my head is that when I read the word to put my name in it, that the, 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 that the Bible is a, is a love letter. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a book of instructions, and, it, and it's for each and every one of us. It's personally to us to you, to me, and to everyone. And so it, that's what came upon me. And you have to know that that was the Holy Spirit. You have to have known that that was the Holy Spirit that said to put my name in it. And he told me to go to Jeremiah 30. And I was high. I, I was always high. And I was, you know, reading Jeremiah 30. And as I was reading Jeremiah 30, I, I started to put my name in it. And, and in Jeremiah, he started to tell me I heard a cry I heard you in India, and I knew that it was that day. He let me know it was that day, that day you got down on your knees. I heard you. I knew that I knew that this God heard me, and he wrote me this letter, and he was telling me that he was going to save me and that he was going to restore my health and that he was going to bring me and my, my children out of the land of captivity. And he was going to heal me of my wounds. I knew this. I knew that it was that God. And the only thing I could think was, when? When are you going to do this? Next year? Two years from now? Because the mess up as I was, I didn't see it happening. And nobody could do anything for me. My family couldn't do nothing for me. My friends couldn't do nothing for me. My children couldn't even stop me. Nobody could, do, could stop me from doing what I was doing. Nobody could. But God. After that, I landed up in the Victory family, and I went in there because my mother had gave me a newspaper article, and my stuff was getting really, really bad. It got really bad, and, and she gave me this article, and I, I stopped picking up my children. You know, I just, le I just didn't want, I didn't, I just, that's how bad it got. I, I just left them. I just left them. I told my mom one day, pick up Felicia. I was right outside in this house, and I knew she was coming off a bus, and I just said, pick her up. I can't, I can't pick her up. Pick her up. Thank God, you know, praise God that my, my mom got in her car from uh, East Mount Houston and went all the way to Humboldt to pick up my, my daughter because I couldn't do it. 
And then my mom had given me this article and she said, you know, I had already lost my home. They, my, Felicia went to stay with my mom. My son was somewhere. And, and she gave me this article and, I, and this article said it's a, it's a recovery center. It's a Christian recovery center. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to go. Uh, I, you know, I, I'll go. You know, everybody's on my back. I got to get everybody off my back. And, you know, I'm just, I'll go do the six months. You know, really, I just wanted to get everybody off my back. Maybe I can start afresh. I, I always thought I was real good at starting over again, right? I was real good at that, and that was one of my, my plans. I, I'll go, and I'll, I'll stay six months, and, uh, and everybody, everybody, everything will be good, and we'll, we'll start all over again. And I stayed there uh, for a year, and um, I left there. Uh, about two days sh short of a year. And uh, I left. I knew God had me there because I couldn't leave. I wanted to leave. I, th I thought of ways of leaving, but I could not leave. And then two days short of a year, just like the door opened up, and I felt like God said, go. Eight months later, I fell back into my addiction, and I, I felt so hard. Um, I, I didn't know what hit me. I felt so fast. I felt so hard. And I landed up on the streets of Houston. And I was out there for a while. And while I was out there going through hell, I would cry out to God. And I would talk to him about this, his truth. I would talk to him about his promise to me. I would talk to him about, why did you waste all that time? Because I knew scripture. He said that the the, the, be confident in the good work you start, you shall finish. I was, I was telling him that. I was telling him about his promise. Why did you do this to me? Why did you give everybody hopes in my family? Why am I out here? Why am I out here? Six years ago, I landed up at the shelter. I, I'm going to read some scriptures to you because I have a word and, I, and I, I have a short time, and so I need, I'm going to move quickly. But I'm going into the book of Joshua. And the, the Lord took me to Joshua. And I'm going to read, um, if you have your swords, you have your word, we're going we're gonna to move quickly into the book of Joshua. And I'm going to start with Joshua 1, 1 through 2. Ready? Here we go. Write them down. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people, get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. 1, 5, and 9. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. And as I'm with you, Moses, so will I. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. And I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people in to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and be very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that they may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. 113. Remember the command that Moses, the servant the Lord gave you, the Lord your God is giving you rest and has granted you this land. 116. Then they answered Joshua, whatever you command us, we will do, and whatever you send us, we will go. 3, 9 through 10. Joshua said to the Israelites, come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you and that he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, the Hethites, the Hevites, the Bedersites. This is very hard. The Gerashites, the Amorites, the Jebusites. Amen. 5-2. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, make a flint knife and circumcise the Israelites again. So Joshua made a flint knife and circumcised the Israelites at Kebeth. In Joshua 1, 2, the Lord spoke to Moses. And I had somebody ask me the other day, and, well, how do you know God is speaking to you? How do, you how, do, how do we know that God spoke to Joshua? How do you know when God is talking to you? And, it, and it's by faith. Bible faith is believing in your heart. 
In Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God's word is alive. It is not human opinion. and Actually, it is all truth, and anything outside of the word is a lie. That's just the way it is. If it's not in the word, it's a lie. It's your own opinion. It don't stand. It cannot create. It can't do nothing. It's got to be in the word. In Hebrews 4.12, it says in the Bible, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to divide in soul, spirit, joints, and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. God's word gets into your heart. It goes in deep. It goes in besides those rusted old gates of your heart, of all those things that have been done to you and said to you, all those coulda, shoulda, done, have done things differently, all those things that, you, that were spoken over you, all those, all those times you made that you fell and you got back up, all those things people said to you it gets in there and takes all those those unforgiveness out all that bitterness out all that junk that you got in your heart God that's how you know it's God because his word gets in you it kind of makes you feel a certain kind of way I know God is talking to me today well I know how did that how did pastor know that how did he know somebody must have told him my wife must have called him my girlfriend must have called him. somebody my child called him that's what God's word does. It gets in there. It gets in there. In Joshua 1, 2, he said, get ready. Arise. Six years ago, God said, arise, Sylvia. Get ready. Amen. All right, Lord. God never wants us to stay in the wilderness. He had a promise to Moses. He had a promise to me. And he said, it's time to get up. Arise, be ready, be ready, arise, be ready. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but Isaiah 43, 19, God gave us this scripture at the beginning of the year. He said, for I'm about to do something new. See it? I've already begun. Do you see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness, and I will create in the dry wasteland. God said it two times. Do you see it? We serve a spiritual God. We are spiritual children, and we need to start looking through our spiritual eyes. Not all this world stuff. You got to see it. You got to know it's coming. It's coming. God is a God of faithfulness. He's a God of promise. He's a God of promise. He said it twice. He says, see it. In Proverbs 40, 20, 21, my son, attend unto my words, incline thy ears unto my saying, and let not them depart before thy eyes. You got to see it. You got to see it. Amen. God is good. Oh, Joshua 1, 5, and 9, do not be afraid. Be strong and of good courage. We got, God is telling us we got to be strong and good courage. God has got our back. God said us. In 2 Timothy 1 and 7, for God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. I've been able to feel the spirit of fear. My daughter had a testimony the other night, and she said, Mom, I felt something there, and I felt the fear. That is God opening to your eyes that that demon has got to go in the mighty name of Jesus. Fear keeps us bound. With God, we got to know God is for us and in us and with us. He says, do not. He's, a matter of fact, he says, do not be afraid. 365 times in the Bible. 365 days in a year. So he is telling us every day, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Do not get weary in doing good. Amen, Lord. Joshua 1, 7. Don't turn from it from the right do not turn from it, from it to the right hand, to the left hand. God is saying, don't look back. He says, don't, don't, don't turn this way. Don't look this way. You don't go, don't go back. Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Don't look over here at your sister. Don't look at your brother. Just keep moving forward. Don't worry about all that background noise. Don't worry about it. He said, don't look to the right or to the left. He's talking about move forward. Don't look, don't look back. You know what happened? We all know that story. 
Moses, Joshua 1.13, God says, remember promises what God has done for me. God says, remember. You got to remember the promises. I remember the promise he gave me. I was able to speak it to him and remind him. We got to remind him. He wants to hear your voice. He created you. He created your voice. He loves you. He loves your voice. He wants to hear personally from you, not from sister, not from sister Sylvia, not from Susie's sister, whatever it is. No, he wants to hear from you. And remember where he brought you out of. I don't know how many of you have come out of some stuff, but you, if you know that you know that God took you out, you got to remember. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for God. I know I should be dead. I should not be here. I should be all out of my mind. Just gone. But God says, remember, remember. In Joshua 1.6, he said, submit. In Joshua 1.6, I need to read that one more time. He said, 16, 1, 16, and they answered Joshua, whatever you command us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. God is saying, y'all need, we need to submit. Yes. We need to be obedient. When God yes. says, get up, get up. Yes. When God says, serve, serve. Yes. We, we got to listen to God. We can't just go about doing what we want to do. When God brought me to the shelter, I was six years ago, I was, oh man, I was, you know, I just wanted a job. I did, I, you know, I was living with someone and he wasn't sharing his cigarettes and I needed some pocket change and I just best be real. I just needed some cigarettes, he wasn't sharing no more. So I went and got me a job. But God had a whole different plan for me in there. And I knew that he brought me there for a reason. And yes, in a shelter where it's dirty, where there's people out of their mind, where there's a lot of stuff going on. I mean, these are broken people, 365 of them. And I had to serve. I had to come outside of myself. And I told the Lord, what about me? I'm broken why do I have to take all this bondage? Why are they cussing me out and calling me all kinds of names? And I've got to pick up throw up and I've got to pick up urine. I've got to do this and do that. I've taken, sat in the shower one time and helped a lady take out bugs out of someone's hair. It seemed like they were just coming out of her scalp. There was so many of them. But God said, I need you to do that. Today I was going to call in. I was going to take a sick day because I have a hundred and something sick days. Sick days, I do. Because I'm, I'm being faithful to God. Because I could have called in any time. And I said, Lord, I'm going to take a sick day today because I'm going to come in. I'm going I'm to speak, and I, I, I want to make sure you know that I'm filled with the Spirit, Lord. And God said, I need you in the shelter. I got to get up early, Lord. I get up at 5 o'clock. I have to be at the shelter at 7, you know. And, you know, I'm, it's Wednesday. That means I'm going to go dive in dumpsters and take out clothes. And I'm going to get hot and sweaty. I'm going to be tired. I need you to go to the shelter. <laughs> See, because in the Bible, in the beginning, where he says that he will, where is it, create in the wasteland. God says he will create in the wasteland. We serve a God that creates. He creates in my wasteland. And so while I'm obedient and I'm serving and I'm getting sweaty and I'm tired and I do this all the time because this is my job, God is creating in my wasteland. Yes, he is. He's doing something in my children. He's doing something in my household. He's doing something in my finances. He's doing something. He's creating in the wasteland because he goes before us. Because he goes before us. You ain't going to see it. He's creating right now because of your faithfulness coming in this place. Because you come outside of yourself on a Wednesday and you, get, you just got off work and you're tired. But you come in. You got kids. You got the job. You got this. But you come in and God says, I'm going to create in your wasteland. Nothing goes to waste with God. Nothing. Whatever the enemy used for me to destroy me, I'm giving God the glory with it today. I'm working for the Lord now. And he can take all that junk and he can pour it out and bring his children in. We got to know that God creates in the wasteland. I love you, Lord. Amen. 
jo um, Joshua 3, 9 and 10, and he will go before us and fight our battles. We don't need to fight no more. Brother told you that. It's a testimony. When people are talking back to you, when it's just not coming the way you want it to come, you just got to know God has got it. You got to learn to walk away. I had to learn to walk away. I remember the first time I was told a lady at the shelter, ma'am, uh, you can't do that. And I turned around and she said, mom. And it was a word that in the world, it was on. <laughs> it was on. I'd be already, I don't know, I'd just fly over there and it was on. And that was the way I grew up, you know, fight my own battles. You don't call me those names. It's going down up in here. But I felt, God allowed it to, like, I felt like an arrow hit me. I did, I felt like I went, in the, but I did it, but I felt like I went, oh. And I just kept walking away. Holy Spirit said, walk away, walk away, walk away, walk away, walk away, walk away. Created in your wasteland. I'm created in your wasteland. God is good. In Joshua 5, 2, 6, he says he set us apart and he... Um, he's, telling, he's telling Joshua to circumcise them because, see, and circumcision means set apart. He's setting them apart. He chose Joshua. He chose that generation and set them apart so that they can bring their family. See, Moses and the ones that went out before, they, they were murmuring and complaining. They, they just murmured and complained the whole time. They went around the mountain, what, 40 years? Is that what they say in the Bible? Yeah, 40 years. Went around the mountain, 40 years, murmuring and complaining. They all died off, and here comes a new generation. <laughs> See, today, we don't have to wait for a prophet or a king or, or a man of God then to, for him to die off. God made it. Jesus made the way to where we can come to God right now, any minute, any time. We can come to him at any time. And he set us apart. You have to know you've been set apart. Each and every one of you have been set apart. And he wants you to arise and get ready and bring your family out of that land in the wilderness. And that God will create in the wasteland. I just want to just end it at that. And God, in the, just one more thing. In the book of Joshua, it talks about the Ark of the Covenant, it just talks about the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant. That's the presence of God then. And again, Jesus is with us. His presence is always with us. It was with, with me when I, when I was, even before I came to him, even before that night that I got down on my knees. It, he was with me. He's the one that kept the gun from going off. He's the one that, that didn't allow me to get killed. He's the one that I didn't do an, a drug overdose when I know I should have many times. His presence is here. He is with us. And when two or more are gathered, he comes compound power. And that's why he wants to keep you separated. That's why he wants to keep you in your home and out of the church house where you can't fellowship with your brothers and sisters. The enemy doesn't want you to get together and gather hands. The Bible says that with one, 1,000 go to flight. With two, it's 10,000. That's 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, 60,000. We got the authority to tell that devil to go. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I see Sister Sylvia dressed in flames. Come on, somebody. She's dressed in flames. The fire of God. I mean, oh, my goodness, you know. Praise God. He, I don't know. If you, if you don't walk out of here alive, boy, something wrong with you. Because I'm going to tell you what. That word she brought brings life. Life. You're not in a place. You're not in a place. And you're, you're not in the place where you ain't, you ain't, you, you got served up real today. Amen. You know, everything, everything that we say and do, you know, we, you know, our testimonies are not something that, that we continue. It's a, it's a place where we show you where God has brought us. Amen. And, and that's what Sister Sylvia was showing, just, just to let you know that whatever place that you are in, he's there. He's there. There ain't no place 
where, where you've been that he hasn't been to. Amen? And he'll reach into the darkest places. He'll reach into the wasteland where there's nothing but waste. And he'll pull you out. Set your feet upon a rock. And today, you know, I'm just, I'm just right now, I'm just compelled just to, just to ask you to bow your heads for a moment. And just ask yourself today, you know what, if I, I, I need that, I need that. I need, I need to know what is it, what is it, Lord? What is it in my life that's keeping me from obtaining all that you have for me? Or Lord, what is it in my life that won't allow me to walk away from the things that I know I need to walk away from? What is it, Lord, in my life? Or who is it? in my life that I know that is not doing me good. Lord, I know that I need you in my life because just like Sister Sylvia said tonight, it was you that put her back together. When nobody else could put her back together, when she could not find her mind, you gave her a new mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So today, if, if that's you here today, I want you to just, I want you to, to walk out changed and Jesus is the only one that can change you he's the only one that can turn to turn everything around he's the only one that can bring light into your darkness he's the only one so today if that's you just just say it from your heart say Lord Jesus I ask you to forgive me Lord Lord show me your promise to me show me Lord what is my purpose in this life? I don't want to continue to live this way. I want to live for you. And today, Lord, I give to you, I give to you my heart. I give to you my commitment. I surrender my life to you. Show me, teach me, lead me, guide me. Allow me to see what you see for me. And I give you all the glory tonight, Lord. I believe. Come on, I believe. And I receive a new thing. A new thing. Let me see it, Lord. In Jesus' name. Now listen, if you said that tonight and you want to show, you want to make a stand you want to take, make a stand before the devil and before all these witnesses. And you say, you know what, I'm not ashamed anymore. I'm not ashamed anymore. If Sister Sylvia can get up there and she can share what God brought her through, I am not ashamed anymore. If that's you, I want you to just come up here and just make a statement this morning. Come on, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Come on. This is a new day. This is a new, this is a new start for you. It's a new beginning. It's a new beginning. It's a new beginning. No more hiding. No more double standards. No more. This is a this is a new time, a new commitment. I want to go all out. You know. We don't want to be a sellout. We want to be sold out. Amen. We were sellouts a lot of time. I used to go in and out, in and out. I was a sellout. But now I'm sold out. And I want you to know today that God loves you and he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Every word that she spoke to you through God's word, those are his promises. His promises are yes and amen. Amen? And he loves you and he gave his life for you so that you can live a life of victory. A life of victory. Amen? And I want to encourage every one of you here tonight. If you haven't went through the New Beginnings class, go through the New Beginnings class. If you haven't went through the honors reward class, go to the honors reward class and finish it. Let me tell you something. I know that Sister Sylvia, I've known her, I've talked with her. And her recovery wasn't overnight, but she had mentors. She had people to speak into her life. She had people to hold her accountable. You know what? Like I said, you need people around you. No person is an island. Amen? No person is an island. We need each other. We need to come into the house of God. We need to come into the assembly. We need to sharpen each other. And tonight, God saw your commitment. He saw your heart. He saw your confession. And today, together, as a family, we're going to do this together. Amen? I said we're going to do this together. 
Stretch out your hands toward them. Father God, we just thank you today for every person that you saw up here today, Lord. Every person walked up here, Father, because they're sick and tired of being sick and tired. They're sick and tired of falling short. They're sick and tired of missing it. Father, and I just thank you, Father, that, that you would lead them by your grace, Lord. That you would lead them by your grace into your promises, Lord. Because your promises are irrevocable. It doesn't matter if they don't do good one day or the next. Your promises are irrevocable. They're theirs. They belong to them, Lord. And I thank you, Father, that they can get up with confidence in you. And to, to know, Father God, that, that it's not over. It's not over. Though a fighter may be knocked down, if he gets back up, the fight's not over. So I declare over their life that they are strong in the Lord and the power of your might. I thank you, Father, that they take priority to your word. Your word is not common unto them. They read your word, Father. They spend time in the quiet place, Lord. And I declare that them and their households will be saved, Lord. And I thank you, Father, that they'll come to the knowledge of who you are to them and their relationship to you. I pray that you would bless them and that you would encourage them and may your light shine upon them wherever they go. May the blessing of Abraham be upon them in all that they do. In Jesus' name, can the church of God say amen? Hallelujah! Hallelujah!